Diablo 4 game director Luis Barriga. So I'm going to choose to pronounce that one. Blizzard lead level designer Jesse McCree and World of Warcraft designer Jonathan LaCraft were let go from Blizzard on Wednesday. Two sources with knowledge of the move told Kotaku. Um, and it has since been confirmed by Blizzard. Right. But this was leaked early or reported early to Kotaku because their names were no longer visible in the Blizzard internal directory or in their company Slack. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesse McCree is the only one of these three that has been brought up in all of the news coming out around the lawsuit, very specifically the Kotaku article that talked about the Cosby suite at BlizzCon and even had direct messages on Facebook from Blizzard employees aware of the Cosby suite and seemingly participating in whatever was going on there. And Jesse McCree was one of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is again, that continuation of the cleanup we're seeing based on the Cosby suite information and photos uh, Jesse McCree, of course, the name of the cowboy character in Overwatch that many people are calling for the name to be changed. But they have also permeated World of Warcraft quite far. There are some six different NPCs with variations on their name, as well as an entire city. So there may be future cleanup in both World of Warcraft to do. Mm. Uh, this is um, level 110 in the Seat of Triumphant. Okay. The Jewel of Argus. Okay, gotcha. Um, chat room saying, too, that LeCraft was in the photo that was part of the Cosby Suite article on Kotaku. Okay, I cannot quickly verify that, but there's a consensus among our, our chat rumors. The photo on Kotaku itself doesn't name everyone in it. No, but we have seen removal of one of the HR representatives was that was in that photo as well. So that's definitely being used as one of the primary vessels for the cleanup they're doing. And it's worth noting that all this is being done from home right now. No one is still working at the Blizzard campus. All of these letting goes are happening internally via online. Well, that's just the nature of, of the world we are in right now, right? They're not good. <laughs> well, what do you do? All right, everybody, come back so we can actually fire you in person. There's also an interesting connection to make here about how long some of these employees have been with the company. In particular, we have exact dates for Bariga and LeCraft. Both have been on since 2005. Uh, Bariga was the Diablo game director, which is definitely worth talking about because we're talking about Diablo 4 here. But they also were a World of Warcraft quest and system designer. In particular, their main accolades and contributions to the game involve Garrison Outposts, the new player tutorials, and the level 90 character boost. O 05 is a long time ago. It is a long time ago. It's essentially the beginning of World of Warcraft. Technically launched yes. in 04, right? But it's the first year of World of Warcraft's lifespan. But to see that pattern, that since 05, since the launch of World of Warcraft, their reigns and their influences over the team and perhaps the discomfort that they brought to that team have been prevalent since then. And now we see the Diablo game director being taken down at this stage. It's an interesting, we don't really know what that stage is. We know from the recent investors call that Diablo's doing great all thumbs up according to what they told investors, and we're looking forward to a delayed uh, Diablo Immortal release. But very, very little was said about Diablo 4. Are we going to enter kind of a Bioware, Mass Effect, Andromeda sort of situation with Diablo 4? We don't know how long, how far along it is and how much a game director being replaced or removed at this time will affect that development. Yeah, it's... There's just no way to know, right? It seemed like Diablo 4 was still quite a ways off, plus COVID hit, and now this uh, would have to imagine it will have some sort of impact. And also, just for the sheer length of time it has uh, taken Immortal to still not release, which isn't even entirely developed in-house. 
that's a it's an interesting one the the ten cent connection to that lots mm-hmm. of people have been concerned about. It's almost a can we weather the storm and make people forget about it for sort of style, but all sort of beta test reports of it say this was you know good fun and it felt like a Diablo game. Many people saying now we wait and see what the monetiza- monetization on top of that is going to be. And that'll choose what sort of investment I make onto a game like this. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to, like, pick uh, any of this down to hard facts, but I did see a lot of chatter amongst Blizzard employees today saying that Diablo 3 lost key leadership during its development and still was able to meet its 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 intended launch date. Um, That's a interesting statement because diablo 3 of course launching with uh notorious code that meant you couldn't log in in the first place i remember that the was developers- like a, a a couple day issue though that was resolved very quickly um sure of course the the real money auction house on release and the sort of tone that was take your time playing it which made players realize that ultimately the content was rather short yeah yeah Overall, too, just the 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 employee and community reaction to these these firings. I'm just gonna call them firings. They keep saying like departed or whatever. Like clearly, these individuals have been forced out of the company. Um, the reaction from from a lot of employees has has been like a, a, a mixture of this is good. To see what happens when we continue talking about this because it hasn't died down. And in the past, when issues like like this has been brought up, when issues of inequality and whatnot have have been brought up around really any video game, it dies down very quickly. In the case of what's going on here with with Activision Blizzard, it isn't. It is continuing to be reported on. It is continued to be talked about by members of the community and championed by the employees themselves. The uh, Better Blizzard uh, Twitter account, which is run uh, anonymously by Blizzard employees, is still posting, is still out there. As we mentioned at the top of today's podcast, it is inspiring similar accounts from completely unrelated studios like Ubisoft. Um, so it... it, it There are results of the lawsuit and all of this information coming to light. Um, And at the same time, what I was trying to lead to, and I got sidetracked there by saying that it was interesting reading the employee's reaction to this saying, good, good, we're still talking about this and we're getting results. At the same time, the employees and members of the community are still bringing up the fact that the four very specific demands of the Blizzard employees in that letter that we talked about almost a month ago now have not even like been referenced in an official statement by Activision Blizzard leadership. So the sentiment amongst employees that I've seen in, in the past couple of days since news of, of Jesse McCree and, and Diablo 4's game director uh, leaving the company, it's a mix. It's a mix of this is good, these people should have gone, but still, could you please respond to our demands? Right, and that's to build a better future here. We heard multiple, multiple times that so in, uh, so employee got lucky because they were on a proper team, a team that had good support and a good relationship with their managers and that supervisor above them. Getting rid of the bad supervisors and the bad game leads or senior game designers is nice. It's a show that the company is willing to get rid of problem people. What they really want, though, is systems built so problem people don't exist anymore and that they actually have channels they can go through to deal with problem people. And I think the, the one that has really stuck with me from the recent stories has been the idea that we don't even want to report issues on our team for fear that the higher ups and Activision get directly involved. Because once they have, as they called it in quotes, the eye of Sauron upon your team, that's when budget cut, cuts start. That's when performance reviews get extremely brutal. And in fact, this week we we heard about how performance review systems are now forcing managers to give more frequent negative reviews in order to motivate the base. But this is tied into their bonuses. And if you get a negative review, you don't get a bonus or profit sharing at the end of the year with Blizzard. The the erosion of, of Blizzard having ever been a dream work environment continues. There was also another sort of token removal that happened throughout this week. That was uh, Francis Townsend stepping down as the head of Activision Blizzard King Women's Network. <laughs> She's no longer a part of that, and she is now just the chief compliance officer. That was uh, such a absolute nothing 
like a there consequence. Are, absolutely, there are uh, there are stresses coming from other areas as well, though, such as the Blizzard Activision earnings call did a very good job of sort of covering up the player numbers and talking about them in a very positive light. However, people are very quick to point out that currently involved players, logging in players, has reached Warlords of Draenor numbers. These are, this is during the time of the content drought, and that was before the release of Overwatch. So any numbers they are now reporting as positive involve Overwatch and subsequent games since that time. Yeah, because they're talking the about... Uh, base. Yeah, they're talking about act monthly active users for all Blizzard everything. Exactly. Not just World of Warcraft. They're referencing World of Draenor to explain a point in time. Not specifically World of Warcraft. So, so it's... Players are down. That That is oh, clear. Yeah. Oh, a absolutely. Which... <laughs> This starts to get away from focusing on the lawsuit, but it all still is wrapped up in this bubble of the state of Blizzard as a company. And it's that, like, like users being down, A, that's not a reaction to this lawsuit because of how we just happened to be at the end of a fiscal quarter, and that's why there was an earnings call. It was too close. Pay attention to the next one to kind of see if there's anything. Or more... Likely, I think, pay attention to it to see how they spin it. Because they're not just, yeah. I don't know, Bobby Kotick is not going to get up and go, yeah, uh, well, as a result of us having a terrible reaction to massive cases of, of sexual harassment and abuse within our company, we lost this. That's not how they're going to frame it. They're never going to come out and admit it in that way. But um, this is just, I, I, I look at this and I see this just as a case of like, this is just the state of Blizzard right now during a, a drought of games and major game updates. That's but we do also in. see pressure from the outside, and this sort of pressure has heavily influ influenced things like YouTube and Twitch over the years. In the Overwatch League, they've lost their sponsors. Many of them are providing statements that they are waiting for reassurance on what the current situation is. So far, there has been no re-sign up of Coca-Cola, Kellogg's, State Farm, or Team Mobile as partners for Activision Blizzard's Overwatch League. Yeah, this started with T-Mobile requesting that their logos not be shown during, I want to say it was the first weekend of competition post the Activision Blizzard lawsuit being made public yeah. to the point where, I forget which team, but they had T-Mobile as a team sponsor, had to put duct tape over the T-Mobile logo on their jerseys. Oh, I hadn't heard that. I heard, first of all, the, the mug that had T-Mobile at the sort of caster desk disappeared. And that was the first note that people saw of something being up. But the duct tape, that's something interesting. Yeah. And then we also have members of, we have shareholders openly calling the reaction or uh, Activision Blizzard's uh, handling uh, and public reaction to the lawsuit, uh, I believe, quote, inadequate. So they're also starting to make their shareholders unhappy to the point where they're being publicly vocal about that unhappiness. As this goes on, we're also going to bring into light those reports that we saw in the past that simply went ignored for hope and uh, dreams of the company, such as the Seeking Better Pay reports that came out in August 5th of 2020. Those have resurfaced now, and people continue to dig through the past couple of years to see when did this thread begin. Ultimately, it looks like this thread may have began all the way back in 2005, given the recent firings. It sure seems to be the case. I mean, again, if you go back to the, the first episode where we talked about this, which was back on episode 384, it's titled Active Liz Walkout. It was our episode supporting the walkout. Um, you went and just looked at publicly accessible reviews of working at Blizzard and went all the way back to, I believe you went all the way back to like 2010. Uh, 2006 was the earliest I could find. Okay, my bad. So, yeah. Very, 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 that would have been, yeah, Burning Crusade era, World of Warcraft, or even slightly before, um, where, yeah, it's, it's, and, and you and I have been looking at this because we've seen a lot, we've seen a certain section of the community going, oh, it's just since, it's just since Mike Morheim left, or it's just since Activision took over, and, and that just seems to be categorically untrue. We hope that by continuing to follow the story, we promote that better work environment for the games we love and the projects that are made. Of course, a lot of people this week have continued to support 
the games and the direct developers that they love. And many, many employees over at Blizzard are saying, keep playing. You know, we, we pour our, our blood, sweat, and tears into making this for you. We're not asking you to leave merely to support us while we look for better conditions for making these projects. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's where I have been finding hope, and especially in like the last week, you know, seeing other game studios fire up similar employee-run Twitter accounts calling for better work environments. Um, I'm Again, I'm just like, at this point, I'm impressed so many people, employees and community alike, are still talking about this and still holding Activision and Blizzard's feet to the coals about something so technical as employee demands. Never heard employee demands reported on this much in regards to anything. And, and, and to me, I see that as a positive.